All right. I'm I'm curious to talk to Steven in New York. All right. Ooh, me too. I'm 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 ready for this one. Yeah. Hey guys. Hey Steven. I know I know exactly who you are. I think we uh we corresponded yeah. a minute ago. Yeah, and actually I had called uh when uh the Heathen show uh I actually talked to uh uh you guys there about oh, okay. this concern that I had. <laughs> because I had basically said that I um I am a, a skeptic pagan, and and V, I think you said at one point that you still kind of you, you don't believe in Wiccanism, but you might still do the rituals. I think. Yeah, um, I call it uh, witch, witch as opposed to pagan or Wicca, just because there isn't right. any god belief there. But yeah, right. I, I totally I, I know of many atheo pagans, secular pagans. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, give us a little bit so, of background in terms of maybe what we talked about before, like cliff notes, and then why you're calling today. Course. So when I called before uh, on the Heathen show, I had said, um, I think that, you know, I, I'm, I really like the, the ritual and spiritual practice, but I'm worried about spreading spiritual woo that I may not, you know, be uh, have a, a thought of in the moment. Yeah. Um, v and I haven't had this conversation at all. Uh <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. So, yeah, it's fine. So, uh, so a couple uh, about a month or two ago, um, I was just sitting online, and one of my friends from work says, "Hey, listen, I'm a Christian, but I think that Freya is reaching out to me." And I go, "Oh, okay. Well, why do you think that?" And they went through this whole uh, story about how. Um, YouTube videos of Freya were coming up, even though she, he's never, you know, looked up the 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 gods at all. Um, that images of cats seem to be appearing before him. Cats and, on the internet, uh, shocker. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> weird. Um, but uh, so I I just listened for a while, and I was like, well, you know, I I can give you the pagan perspective on this, and I can give you the atheist perspective on this because i'm kind of both mm -hmm. um but i want to make sure i uh, that i tell you that you know i don't actually believe the gods exist i just use them as you know myths and stories and and cultural things um and and he was like no i need the pagan i need the pagan perspective and i and i was here was here was here's a a, a fundamental part of this is that He's he when I first met him, he was a fundamentalist Christian, like hardcore. Uh huh. And uh, through his conversations with me, he's kind of gotten out of that even before this. Okay. And my thought of being of him going, Hey, I'm not a Christian anymore, I'm a pagan. I was like, Ooh, that could be better. <laughs> and at the <laughs> same time, I was like, But no, I can't do that because that's you know fundamentally against my ethics. Mm -hmm. So I was very confused about how to move forward in this conversation. Uh, and basically what it came down to is me saying, hey, listen, I don't believe the gods actually exist. If this is something that you want to pursue, please do. But with the understanding that I can't, even though I'm a, I'm a, a ordained minister in New York, I, I cannot, um, you know, pull you along this path i can guide you in terms of like lore and from that perspective of just being stories but i i can't give you the religious the religious needing that you probably want mm -hmm. yeah that's i mean if, if you're if you're watching the screen eric has been giving me told you so eyes this entire time um there there is a lot of kind of fraught here and on on the one hand I love that the 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 sign is cats on the internet. I can't. That's amazing. It's beautiful. That's gonna be our thumbnail. You know that. Oh, uh, cats on the internet. Oh my god. Just like grumpy cat. Oh yes. Oh <laughs> yes. Um, and then also like a basic understanding of SEO and how tags work mean that if somebody <laughs> in some video tagged cats or or gods or Freya, um, even if it didn't show up anywhere in the video itself, that would then enter that keyword into the algorithm and you'd start having those be suggested to you. So there are some very, very simple explanations for why this probably was not 
the goddess Freya reaching out to your coworker. But I think the larger question here is, what are the ethics around secular paganism or any kind of God belief or, you know, religious adherence if you do not want to lead other people down the route of believing in gods? And it's a it's a worthwhile conversation to have. And I'm excited that we're having it because it's going to help us navigate this better in the future. But as far as... As far as what to do in that situation, I think, A, setting up boundaries with a coworker, right? Because it, as, as, as friendly as it might be, like there are still protocols at work and you shouldn't feel like you need to, you know, explain your spirituality or lack thereof to somebody who you're working with, right? Um, so I do hope that that at least gives you a little bit of a, a leeway there. Um, yeah, it, it does become an issue sometimes because yeah. when I have to basically explain that I'm a pagan and an atheist at the same time, um, that concept is uh, very alien to a lot of people. Yeah, I, I feel that. Um, I've, I've had similar conversations at work about different aspects of my identity as well. And it's always like really friendly and well-intentioned, but at the same time, it's like, uh, yes, and this is not the conversation I came into work to have. Um, so right. here's here's what I would say. Ultimately, if somebody is looking for something to believe in, they are going to find something that works for them. And they are going to find it in spite of evidence to the contrary. And they are going to find it in spite of more reasonable people in their lives saying, maybe you should do some more research here, right? So you cannot own what your colleague has decided to believe for themselves. That is a recipe for a lot of guilt and shame on your end, and it's not useful, right? Because that's not going to help them. That's not going to help you. If they decided that they are done with fundamentalist Christianity, that's super cool. If they need something else to tide them over while they keep things, you know, churning, uh, and they want to talk about Freya, that's cool too. Like that is their prerogative. And you've done a really good job from what I hear by saying, hey, just so you know, we can talk about this in the realm of story, in the realm of myth, but I'm not going to tell you to believe in this, this God because I don't. And here are some reasons why. And so I think right now, if you choose to take it on, because you don't have to, this is not a requirement, um, you might be in a very good position to lead them down some critical thinking paths, right? Okay, well, let's talk about why maybe you've been seeing these videos pop up. Do you know what SEO is, right? Or, or priming. Or priming, right, exactly. Do you know, you know how when you're thinking about buying a car and then you see that car everywhere and you're like, wow, this is a sign that I should buy that car. No, it's a sign that you're now thinking about it and you're noticing it more and so you're just you know, gathering that information in a different way than you normally would. So it could be a very good thing to start the process of conversation with this person, but it doesn't have to be for you, right? You have your beliefs, you have the way you live your life, and it sounds like you are doing a good job of trying to separate those two and explain that difference. And it's up to your colleague to decide what they want to latch onto and what they want to believe. And if they come to you with questions, be honest and lead them down a skeptical path if you can. Um, and really, that's as much as I can. That's as much as any of us can do. Right. Because if we take on ownership of what other people are going to use our words for, how they're going to interpret things, how they're going to apply them to their lives. I wouldn't be able to get on this show. I, <laughs> I wouldn't be able to get on the Internet at all. I'd be like, well, what if somebody one day decides that I said a thing and that's their life now and then something horrible happens and then it's my fault. Right. That's not helpful. <laughs> so, right. yeah, do your thing. Um, and be honest about the the way that you look at the world. And if someone asks you about it, talk to them if you feel comfortable doing so. Um, I don't know. That's 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 all I've got. I, I, if, if if I might add just a little bit more, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be it would be beneficial if when you were phrasing, you know, talking about. Um, how you know paganism has kind of given you um, 
a, a set of traditions and, and identity and things that you kind of hold on to and value, um, framing them specifically in that sense can help bolster against a, an overall acceptance of a belief that you may not hold um, in the same way. Uh, I, and, and I totally understand and V and I have this conversation and I, and I, and I poke V about it, but <laughs> I, I get it. I get it. I just personally, I think that I um, still celebrate Christmas and I still celebrate a lot of things that um, I was raised and told are Christian holidays and, 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 and that kind of stuff, but I don't call myself a Christian. Um, but maybe that's just implicit with the society that we're in. I understand that if you need that label, okay. Um, but taking the time and 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 just talking about skepticism, you know, if you feel like you really need to do something, talk about skepticism because if they have the tools, they can come to the conclusions on their own. Yeah, they don't need you to walk them through every single thing. But if you can talk to them about you know, why do you think something is true? And and what kind of tools do you use to investigate? You know, and have you heard about, you know, like V was saying, SEO or, you know, priming, things like that. It just, just trying to give them those pieces. Mm -hmm. I think that if you feel like you need to do something, that's going to be the best use of it. This is the, the show's skeptical generation, not it's not skeptic, skeptic generation. <laughs> it's not though. <laughs> not atheist generation. <laughs> yes, that is accurate. That's accurate. With him, with him and especially though, I think that a lot of his, uh, he does hold a lot of cultural things very close to heart. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, I, I think that maybe the, the same things that I do would be beneficial for him in the long run. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't want to completely just cut him off. Yeah. Um, yeah. and even guide him through, you know, my practices as, as much as they are. Um, one real quick thing, though, I, uh, to you, I just want to say, keep your Christ out of my Yule. <laughs> um, I like it. I oh, like it. goodness. <laughs> All right. Thank you for calling anyway, in, Stephen. So I much, hope guys. that it helps. It did. Thank you so much. I watch you guys every Sunday, and I really appreciate what you're doing. Thank, Thank you. you keep it up. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that was nice. Yeah. And, and, and funny kind of related story real quick. Okay. There is something to be said for the gradual approach, right? Um, it's it's, it's well, all well and good to be like, oh, yes, I talked to somebody about skepticism once and now they're an atheist, you know, but that's not how it works most of the time. And mitigating harm, I think, is a, a big portion of that, even if it doesn't end up with where we want people right away. So, yeah. for example, I mean, we, we took. Oh, go ahead. We took we took a long time yeah. in our individual ways to get to where we are, and that's fine. Like every every person has their own journey, um, but we were doing a diversity meeting at work, and it was me and it was uh, a colleague, and we were talking specifically about witchcraft, mm -hmm. and we were talking about the history of it, the etymology of it, the the sociological aspects. But a large part of it was how do you do this ethically? How do how do you be you know for lack of a better term quote a good witch? Um, and that was things like, you know, maintain boundaries with uh, with other people, you know, respect consent, don't impose anything on other people, don't appropriate, you know, all of this. Mm -hmm. And we didn't walk away with with the and also magic is wrong and bad and, and, and not true and, you know, <laughs> never speak of it again. It was like, hey, if you are going to do this, here are some good ways to go about that. And the next week. A coworker came in and was like, V, I went to a dinner and okay. there were like the bad kind of witches there. They were really not great. They didn't respect my boundaries. Mm -hmm. They pulled me into things without my consent. They were like appropriating other cultures. It was so cringy. And I was just like, I'm so glad I know that this is not okay. So like Good. regardless of whether or not that person believes in any kind of supernatural anything, they now know a little bit more about how to be respectful, right? And how to protect themselves from woo. Yeah. So even small little bits of, you know, changing people's minds is useful. It's not all or nothing. Good. Yeah, absolutely. 